Welcome everybody. This is my new channel. I have another channel where I help out people and do repairs and tutorials, etc. But I amass a lot of tech and some of it is so good even though it's older. I just decided I should do some reviews on some of this stuff. I am, <laughs> I am so excited for this Lenovo Legion Go. I got it yesterday and I told myself I'd wait till today so I could record the unboxing, although unboxings aren't that great but I'm going to do a massive review of this thing and I'm gonna test it out in ways that I haven't seen people do online. I don't normally follow reviews and threads and forums, but because of this, I've been just so excited that I've been following everything and just indulging in all the info I can find. I'm going to use this primarily as a workstation. I love gaming, I am a gamer, and I will do some of the AAA games, but I'm going to run some emulators, some other stuff. I'm gonna run Photoshop, I'm gonna try Premiere, I'm gonna try some 4K editing. I'm going to try it as a DAW, a digital audio workstation. I will probably run Ableton, I might try a MIDI controller, I'll try a hub. I do not have an eGPU, but those have already been verified to work. May pick one up at some point, but I am all about travel. I also have a travel website. And this is my new go-to for travel. I hope to leave my laptop behind. I hope to leave my switch or phone and controller and sort of everything behind and just use this for everything. So I'm super excited. This came extremely well supported inside a box with very thick foam padding. And I just thought that was a really nice plus. I did order it through Best Buy with the whole fiasco of them not having it at the first date. And now it's in stores. Huge blunder on their part, unfortunately. So a lot of people went to Micro Center. Anyhow, let's open this thing. One seal in the back here. By the way, the box is gorgeous. It's really nice. Okay, this is really cool. <laughs> a little odd, there's a tear in it. So this wasn't opened or anything, but it's just a little odd. Slide it out so it comes with this sort of Nice little holder with a QR code. Never believe for some software stuff. Has a Legion Lenovo support. Nice. Right off the bat, I can tell you that I'm sad that this does not fold. For a travel device, this should fold down. But no worries, because this is a 65 watt adapter and you can find these and source these now for 20 bucks. And there is a manual hiding under here. And that appears to be it. All right, let's open this up. Super excited. The case is really nice, by the way. Just first impression is the Legion logo on top is rubber. And it's really nice feeling. Definitely quality. The case just stands out as high quality. I know everyone's mentioned it, but the little magnetic flap on front for the Type-C it's a cool little innovation, but if you do put it in there and you happen to twist this thing or something, you might just snap it off. So be really careful when you do that. Handle on top, really thick nylon. That is nice. Okay. And that is massive. <laughs> Fun, funny story is I initially saw the Steam Deck years ago before, I believe it took a whole year for the Steam Deck to get into people's hands, which was sad. Steam Deck was a huge innovation at a time. I was, I'm a console gamer. I was gonna jump into PC thinking, hey, this is awesome. It took forever to come out, so I never got it. Kind of phased, phased out and I forgot about it. Then the Rogue Ally came out. I saw that and I thought, wow, that's cool. Never saw either of them in person, but I always, once I saw the comparison of the dimensions, I thought, wow, the Rogue Ally is significantly smaller. I thought Steam Deck is massive. I'll never use that. <laughs> and compared that to a Nintendo Switch, which I do have, it's just huge. And I thought, I started laughing, thinking, I would be embarrassed almost to play that somewhere public because it's, it's as if you're toting around a laptop. <laughs> but this, I'm going to stick with the big thing. However, this screen fills up the whole area, so it's worthwhile. It's a trade-off. Okay, it's a little hard to get out with your fingers. Has this cool little strap right here on top and you lift it up. Really cool. First impressions. Wow, that is cool. Okay, gotta look at the rest later. Wow, <laughs> it's so nice. Okay. Uh, I can't get over it. 
holding this in my hand, this is comfy. I heard a lot about the weight. This isn't too bad. Although nothing feels too bad when you first lift it, it's when you're holding it or carrying it for a mile that it starts to fatigue you to all hell, right? But this is okay. I, I think a lot of people may be sitting and worst case, you could probably put a pillow or something underneath your lap or whatever you're holding your backpack and balance it a little bit. Beautiful. The joysticks, this is the first thing I touched. They are rubberized. I thought they'd be plastic. That is a nice touch. They feel really nice. They're not the same size as a PS3, but very close, I'd say, and they're high. They're pretty high, so they're not recessed really like the Switch. They're definitely bigger than the Switch. Really nice. I'm glad they decided to go with the matte finish because the gloss on the first prototypes, that looked terrible. This screen is massive and amazing though. Wow. That Lenovo silver logo on the back, it's really nice. The build quality is amazing. Wow. This is <laughs> very much like the Switch. It feels very solid. I haven't touched my Switch OLED in a very long time, but based off memory, I think that Switch OLED may be a little stronger feeling. This is a tad flimsy in the middle, but I'm just nitpicking now. It's very solid on the hinges. It's just you can tell it's plastic. That's to keep the weight down, which I don't mind, but this, this thing's not going to go anywhere. Although if you possibly karate chop it in the middle, maybe. It's cool. It sits like the fold where it just has whatever angle you want to keep. thought it may be just a one on and one off angle, so that is really nice. I'm not going to disconnect the controllers a lot, but I do like that option. And I'll tell you the best part of that is this thing is massive and I want to travel and put this in a tiny pocket. That is why I couldn't get the Steam Deck in. The Rogue Ally was appealing to me, except I don't want a seven inch screen. Some people love that. <laughs> Before I even knew this existed, I said, they really need to make a handheld that has a massive screen because even a laptop feels small to me now. This is definitely a great medium. I would have been cool with eight inch, but 8.8 .8 is even better. And the more screen to body ratio is the best you can do. This seems really close, but the controllers disconnect and therefore this tiny little thing will just slide right in a pocket. It almost looks like the size of maybe two passports stacked next to each other. I'd have to get one, but that looks uh, maybe slightly smaller. It's a pretty thin too. I, and people are saying it's thick, but that's maybe three quarters of an inch. The buttons release it here. Let's try to pop one of these off and see how it goes. I should probably read the instructions first. Uh, day one, didn't even turn on, broke it. Okay, it looks as if it kind of pops down, which is nice. So it doesn't slide on like a switch, but wow, these are really light, really light. Bulk of the weight is certainly here. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. These are extremely light. I could understand why people were saying that these feel cheaper than this, but it doesn't feel cheap. It just feels really light and I'm okay with that. What they need to do is put an accessory out to connect the middle like a regular controller, which I'm sure they will and people will 3D print these. But the one thing I was worried about is the switch over time becomes loose. And while it hasn't affected performance, it's just annoying to some people, I get it. These are plastic, so to hold the bulk of this weight, I thought they may be metal, but it doesn't appear so. So if you snap it down, let me see if I can get a shot of that. Just sitting up by a hair, and then you just put it in and snap it down. I don't see the complaints about that because it seems rather simple. So if you press the button and slide it, pop it down, it's a piece of cake. And I haven't even read the instructions, nor have I seen anybody do that in a review. I just sort of guessed, which was kind of stupid because it could have damaged something. But yeah, the pop up isn't as satisfying. It doesn't click. So you're not exactly sure if it's in it. Maybe the, I heard a tiny click, but anyhow, seems really simple. While the Joy-Cons are Joy-Cons, <laughs> Well, the handles are pretty light and the buttons could be questionable to some people. I think they're pretty nice. One thing that's going to be great for a lot of people is the back controller is textured. 
to provide grip, especially when people may be sweating Call of Duty. <laughs> but that should help a lot. It's it's like a handle of a gun almost, sort of. A like crisscross pattern, it's dotted, but it's nice. It, it significantly helps, I can tell. The one thing I don't like about the controllers are the buttons on back. I'm not a huge fan of the buttons on back, but I'm glad to have options, so I'm indifferent about it. But I can see how this may annoy people because when you move, you tend to squeeze a little bit, and you're going to constantly press these. So if they're activated with something, you have to be sure that that game, you, you don't continuously press them. I almost wish they would have left out this button here, and then maybe you could have grabbed the bottom two with just your lower fingers, but still you hit this button here. So I think in one of the future improvements, I'm going to talk about or add that to the list of this. The vibrating function of the controllers or the feedback, the rumble. I've only played one game and I, it was an emulator for Nintendo. I go hard in the beginning, <laughs> but it, um, it's, I believe the rumble was working with the emulator. It was pretty interesting. So the, the feedback was good. Now I can't compare because that's not going to be set up properly for this controller and this probably has better implementation in something else which I'll update in the next video. Also the reason why I'm on emulators only is because hotel Wi-Fi I cannot download any games on Steam because it's just too slow even with the high speed so you know that's where I'm at right now but I will get to it. I can see the light sensor. This is fairly small. Size of a hand really. So fitting that much in here is impressive. That is cool. The best part about this, if you take the controllers off, is it just sits there and you play. That's really cool. Plus, you could just, if you don't like these, you can just use a PS4 controller or an Xbox controller. The buttons, they're not loose on back. The D-pad from the initial prototype review, I've only watched a few, the D-pad doesn't appear as clicky as it would have in the other videos. It's definitely smoothed out. This feels nice. Surprised. I like it. The XY buttons, they feel nice. Everything feels pretty nice. I guess the only complaint I could see about this is that they are light. They're really light. That should be a good thing, but people, <laughs> we, we are so used to cell phones and quality now that we kind of equate a certain weight to quality. I understand. It's a little hard to wrap your mind around. I guess we'll see how they hold up over time, but they're they're good. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with these, but this is definitely the bulk of the weight here. Yeah, it's just a very, it's a very subtle click in. So you'll definitely want to push this down and make sure that these are on before you put this in your hand. Let me finish the unboxing. I apologize. Everyone saw this. This is the holder. It is it is magnetic. That is really cool. And it has sort of a plastic rim around it, like a mouse. It has a plastic rim around it like a mouse pad. So this should be smooth. This is cool. I think I have never used the mouse to play Call of Duty. I am strictly a controller player, PS5 usually, PS4. But I think this would be great for Call of Duty or first person shooter quick games because I, I always question, and no offense to people, I always question how do you feel like you're shooting some sort of mechanism or handling some sort of function on a real item like a gun when you're using a mouse click. It just, the immersion, and controller's not a whole lot different, but the immersion's not there. At least the controller feels like something you're handling or, <laughs> I don't know, it has some sort of functionality. Maybe I'm being too abstract, but this, feels like a joystick or something or even a trigger handle this may be used for flight simulators or something like that or a joystick for a jet that would be really cool I just thought that was cool I thought I'd try one of those up and down sort of vertical mice and it sort of sits like this on your hand and it took me all of two minutes to get used to it it's very similar to this if you know what I'm talking about that Logitech vertical mouse very light same actual weight as this and it has held up, so. But it's just like this. So I, I don't think this will take much getting used to. The thing that I would worry about is hitting buttons where they're not supposed to be, but I'll have to see how that feels after. 
The thumb wheel here is kind of cool for the mouse scroll wheel. I wanted to show that I do have the screen protector. I got the iVolair screen protector quite a while back. This is half the price of the other ones. It's probably the same exact thing. They're probably all made the same place. So I don't know if I'd pay the excess for the other name brand ones, I'm just saying. But I will put that on there and make sure that it's solid. I prefer gloss to keep the sharpness. I know a lot of people are looking for the matte. I haven't seen one yet, but I'll let you know how bad it is in glare. I think this is a 500 nit screen. That's not gonna be that bright in the daylight, so I don't foresee people gaming in the sunlight with this anyhow. We'll see how it fares. This is the only laptop I have with me, an Asus G14 2022. And this, in comparison, let's see, I'll put it here first. And then I'll show the front camera. It's a little over half, I'd say it's about 55%, maybe 60% of the size of this laptop. It's significantly lighter than this laptop. Considering it can do very similar things, not as powerful, but very similar things. By the way, this thing blows me away with what it can do I, it's for the size. Thickness, just wanted to compare. But one thing to keep in mind is that I think a lot of the specs are only listing the controller width the controller width is over double, over double what the width of the tablet part is. Let's turn this on. <laughs> I wasn't going to record this, but it's just so exciting. Maybe someone will share the excitement with me if you're just coming tomorrow or next week. I'm sorry again. Sorry, guys and ladies. It's DOA. That would be terrible. It's kind of funny. I drove from California to Arizona. But I waited till 6 p.m. for UPS to deliver this before I drove. So I got here at 1 in the morning. Well, mine is dead. So let me charge this and we'll come back and check it out. <laughs> Let's turn it on. Gonna hold the top button. I'll press it first and see what happens. Oh, it is a press to turn on. Cool. And the rings light up. The rings are an overlooked factor, the RGB. I am ecstatic about RGB. I just like lights. I have a party bag I carry around for when we party at places or hotels and there are lights and lasers and I love lights. Glow sticks, <laughs> you name it. If it has colored lights, I'm in. It is a portrait screen, unfortunately. You can see by the startup just loading. That is one of the downfalls they really shouldn't have done. So, the screen is brilliant. It is, wow, okay. You don't actually get to immerse yourself into it until you see the screen, but wow, it's, this is gonna be fun. I, I may game a lot more now. Okay, I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna set this up and put some stuff on there and hopefully play some games and get some stuff going, but super, super excited. Realistically, you've all seen unboxing videos if you're like me and you've paid attention to everything going on. If you just heard about this, which is also possible since I heard about this the day before it was available for pre-order, I thought, what, that's <laughs> real? You may just be catching on right now. So if that unboxing helped you, cool. If not, let's get into some of the functionality that may be used day to day for people and some of the questions I'm going to attempt to answer. I made a list of stuff that I was looking for and I couldn't really find, although I haven't dug as deep as some folks have, understandably. I'm about two hours in and I am getting tired from setting it up, I really am. A couple of things, I'm just going to notate stuff along the way and then splice it in. Another thing I don't, care for in particular is the dual functionality of what should be the start button up top. I haven't played with it yet and I'll just have to adapt to the start and select. I don't mind. But the quick settings, this should just be quick settings. What they can do to get around this, and I hope they do, is just a long press to open the other menu that you don't use that much and then just the quick press will open up the quick settings all the time. 
If you quick press once, it brings up that. Go back, it brings up this. I may not use this as much. This should be a long press, and this should be a quick press every time because you'll want to keep bringing this up. If I hold this or long press it, nothing happens. So it's not being utilized. They need to make that a thing. The quick menu is cool though. The lighting effects, it seems there are only three. I'm, I'm assuming we can adjust this in the long run. The thing I wanted to show is here are the modes. It's been on performance for the operating system the entire time in balance. And this is where it's rather quiet. Put it on performance for TDP mode. Sorry, thermal mode. Nothing really changes, but the indicator changes to red. I love that. Put it back to balance. The indicator changes to white. Put it to quiet. The indicator changes to blue. And custom is purple. There we go. Custom is purple. I'm going to leave it on balanced for now. I'm going to try gaming on balanced. As far as using this as a mouse, I've been using it for about an hour. It, it, it's got to have a pretty good DPI setting, I would assume. I don't know if there's adjustments on that yet. It's pretty responsive and depends what surface you use it on. This table here is really smooth. I even cleaned it before I set all this stuff down, so it seems to be pretty good. It's really light. It's not perfect. If they would have angled this adapter, I think more like this, it would have been a little easier to use the scroll wheel. The scroll wheel, I'm glad to have it, and it's clicky and decent, but it is a little slower than I'm used to. Of course, I'm used to the Logitech MX3 mouse, I think, so it's got a momentum wheel where you roll it and it just keeps going. It's a really nice wheel. But it does, here's a $20 mouse. This is still smoother than this on the controller. It would be perfect if I could rest my hand like this. And because that works. So the right click is right here, M1, and the left click is M2, which is fine. With When I click M2, it takes a little bit more thought to not click anything else. Pressing this button doesn't really affect anything, but when I'm holding it like this, the scroll wheel is just out of place. So what you have to do is you kind of have to, see if I can hold this, kind of have to rest your hand a little open instead of gripping it nicely, because the grip is nice for games and whatnot. But when you're scrolling, if you see, no matter what I do, Right here, my thumb won't reach, not even the ball of it. So you have to kind of keep it loose to have your finger here to scroll. And it's not the most comfortable and it's taking some getting used to, but my point being is that for fine detailed work, such as in Photoshop or something like that, this may not fly even with getting used to it. And this took me longer to get used to than other mice I've used, including the vertical ones and whatnot. It's not bad, and I'm glad to have it, but I, and I will need more time with it. But right off the bat, it's just a little weird, and I feel like if it were angled down, then this would be easier to lift up and click, and you wouldn't have to hold the mouse so much, and then you could do this. But when you hold it like this, it just doesn't work. The other thing I'm doing is I have this folding keyboard, and I've had it for years. I've never really used it because the <laughs> The enter and the backspace are tiny. It is considered full size, but it's just not perfect. So I'm still getting used to typing on it, but it is cool. So I have this keyboard. I was going to use this mouse. I forgot to bring a Bluetooth mouse. And this has an IR sensor, which is not USB-C and I don't have an adapter with me. So I am stuck with this and I'm, I shouldn't say that. I'm glad to have this, I really am, but it is a little slower when I'm trying to set up tedious things. Well, I've been using this as a mouse, sort of for a workstation setup. When I had to restart the tablet multiple times to install stuff and et cetera, et cetera, this wouldn't turn back on. And I thought that was an issue. I kept pressing all the buttons. I tried multiple things. What I realized that there is there are hotkeys. 
Earlier, I referenced the fact that you press this once for the quick menu and you press it again for the left menu and you press it a third time to bring it back to the other menu. And I'm not a fan of that. And I thought maybe they could do a long press to bring up the left menu. Well, the long press on these buttons, the left and right ones, do things I wasn't aware of. Another tip that I'll go over in another video is learn the hotkeys. Some of them are functional and useful and it's cool to have. Therefore, when you turn the unit back on and this is not working, instead of having to plug the controller back in and disconnect it just to have your mouse working in, all you do is long press this and hold it until the light ring turns on. So you hold the button up here. And it turns on about 10 seconds. That's that. This did have an update and it required you to, to put the controllers on the unit. When FPS mode is on, you click the toggle on, the trackpad does not work. So it's just sort of a hardware switch. So I'm going to click it back off, even when it's connected to the thing. And then now the trackpad works. That being said, you need to remove the sticker, but remove that sticker. The touchpad is really nice. And it's so small, but it's very responsive. If I'm dragging this file here, my finger's already at the edge. But if I go all the way to the edge and hold, it does this sort of walk across the screen or whatever direction I go, which is really great. It's really subtle, but when you put your finger on the trackpad, there is a tiny haptic feedback in the controller. It's really cool. You can probably turn that off. It's so small that you may have a tough time noticing it, but it's just a really small tactile feedback sort of thing. I like it. This store, it looks okay. But it's old school looking. I'm not digging the triangle corners. Can't complain, I don't really care because I'm not going to use this. If they continue supporting this, I will start supporting them by buying games through here. It looks fairly good. They could round the corners and some of this stuff and polish it a bit, which I'm sure they will. but. I haven't played with the functionality yet. When I saw this, I thought this strip right here looks kind of tacky. <laughs> Not a big deal, but if you want to impress with a new unit and you got one piece of software on here, you might as well make it look good so people will want to buy and invest in it. Just my two cents. I am still having fun playing with this and it's a joy. Another thing is that the charging was rapid. It was at zero, it was dead. Plugged it in, I think maybe 20 to 25 minutes, it charged, it really did charge the 70% or so, and it has been full the whole time. I've seen a lot of people complain about the fans. I completely was oblivious because I forgot, because it's so quiet, I don't, I don't get it. It's a little bit high pitched, I do hear it, but it's one of those things that if you let it annoy you, it will annoy you. If you keep thinking about it, it's going to keep building chemical precursors in your head and you're going to keep transmitting that signal and it's going to get stronger, 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 stronger. Got to break that cycle. So if you can, mind over matter again, I think that will help. If you focus on that, you'll only see it. That being said, I get that it just bothers some people. It's, um, it can be sharp and too much treble, you know, like, what is it, bear dynamics? Yeah, that, that, uh, that treble curve, that, I, I get it, but it's rather quiet just to hear the fans full speed. So I will hold this at a safe distance, let's say five inches away. So right now it's five inches, I'll be quiet. Now I will put the full fan speed on. It does get fairly loud, it really does. But do it one more time. Let's try with this mic just facing down. I have a mic right here on the camera too, but the mic, my lavalier mic, I believe is better. But let's just try this one. So here, I can't really hear anything. There's a little bit of white noise in this hotel room, but that's it. But here, the fan, you will hear this. There's really 
pumping out of there. <laughs> it's like a mini hair dryer. I can see. I can see people not liking that on full speed, but in this hotel room, it's fairly quiet. There's a little bit of white noise in the wall. Even with this on full fan, it still doesn't drown that out, and I think that's still louder. So I'll try this again. If I don't post this up, I'll try this again, or I'll post both results in a really quiet environment next week or make a little short out of it, because that may be a determining factor for some people. The audio was a big one for me, so I'm gonna test that next. I haven't even got to download Spotify yet because I'm still trying to set up Windows. But the fan, I just wanted to mention that as, as some of these things progress that I've seen and noticed, it doesn't bother me. It, it is a little high pitched, but just ignore it. I have tons of headphones, every kind you can imagine, but I still prefer speakers aimed at me and, and, and overall sound, but I definitely will use the headphones if it starts to bother me or in airports or wherever. So there's trade-offs, but I, people shouldn't have to rely on headphones. They should have good sound out of this. So we'll tweak it. We'll see how it compares with the fan noise. And I'm just going to give you how I, I'm just going to give you my thoughts on it and how I feel because everyone's, it's a subjective thing. Everyone's going to have their own opinion. If there's any fan noise, I'm not getting it. So <laughs> if that's the case, then that may not be for you and that's cool. But for some people on, on the edge, not sure. I'll just let you know what I think. And if, I can sustain dealing with it and it doesn't bother me. If you need to travel and you want the tiniest one, the Rogue Allies Cool has the VRR, right, that everybody's arguing about. We're going to compare that and see if this 144 hertz screen without VRR works. I think it will be fine. The biggest letdown for me, which we'll talk about certainly once I figure this out, I'm going to EQ it and everything. I'm fairly decent with audio tech, but the speakers, sound is at least 50% or equal to video quality. So it always bothers me when, when places invest in video quality and have such an amazing device like this, full color gamut and high refresh rate and beautiful large screen, but put the cheapest speakers they can. It makes no sense. I would have gladly paid extra for the good speakers. And Asus, I have a G14 computer and those speakers blow me away. They're the best speakers I've ever seen on a laptop and it's a tiny 14 inch laptop. So I knew Asus before even touching it or hearing it, it, I knew it was going to be good. Asus, sorry. Tomato, tomato. I also have a Legion laptop with a NVIDIA 3080 or 3070, one of those, and I don't game with it. But those speakers, it's a 17 inch too, so they could have fit massive speakers in there. Those speakers are horrible. They're just, even with EQ, I have to bump up the, the low end so high that normally any other speaker would be well over distortion rates and everything and still even then it's just acceptable so I'm really sad about that I hope these are a little more acceptable than the Legion laptop I have I'm really hoping but we'll see my goal here for this channel is to retroactively review things because a lot of devices are still viable or product models haven't updated in years for instance the Osmo Pocket 2 until a month ago was completely viable for the last four years even though it's four years old things like that and they're so good that you just want more reviews on them. Sometimes I find it very hard to find real world real <laughs> real world answers to a lot of the questions I have or scenarios that develop over time. Speakers, some of the old speakers blow away the new speakers, things like that. So I wanted to really focus on retroactively reviewing things that are still great and maybe even more affordable now, possibly harder to source, who knows. But I would mix in some new stuff too. I do pick up new tech all the time. My reviews will be pretty on point as far as what I really think about it. There's no fluff in there because they gave me a free one as incentive. But even if they did, I would still stay true to my values because that's just how I feel about things and I like to do it right. I'm going to wrap this up now. I have elaborated quite a bit from my initial impressions and a couple of hours of use. I hope this helped someone out or at least let you share in the excitement that I have for this thing. I'm still really excited and I'm going to be playing with this every spare moment I have this week and learning and fixing and adapting, hopefully optimizing this thing. So subscribe for more. I will drop the next video as soon as possible, which should be far more structured and should give you some hard data or at least some hard results, even if they're qualitative. So thanks for watching. Again, hope this helped you out. See you in the next video. Take care, everybody.